Hey everyone, I know some of you, I'll be catching you on your drive home from work, uh, but check this out. I think this is going to be a great one. We were talking about real love in Root Bible Academy this week, and uh, define real love as the God kind of love. The, the difference we, we illuminated in Root Bible Academy between the love that everyone in the world can share and have and experience versus the love that we have as Christians that we can choose to share with others is that the love that we have is limitless. And what kind of love is this? Now, let me go back because I know we hit this. It was a couple days ago. And I want to make sure you all remember our definition for love as Christians is vastly different than the love that this world knows or has or receives or is used to receiving, I should say. The love as defined in the word is, hang on, let me make sure I get it right. Choosing to honor and serve regardless of your feelings and regardless of how they respond. It has nothing to do with the other person. Actually, when you look in the word, it doesn't even have anything to do with ourselves. It literally only, the only contingency is Jesus who doesn't change. So there's really no way out or, or no way to, to limit sharing love with everyone. The God kind of love. Not the world kind of love. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about choosing to honor and serve regardless of your feelings or how they respond. And that's how we can love. That's the kind of love that Jesus was talking about in John 13 when he says, all people will know that you're my followers if you love each other. We've heard that verse, but I don't see the church's love at the moment, making that big of an impact in the lives of others. I, I would more say that, that the world understands that uh, the church will feed on itself and attack its own uh, if there's any sort of uh, faltering or sin or discussion even. Uh, the discussion about different viewpoints, it can get ugly and nasty real fast, uh, way more than I experience in my times when I'm around non-Christians. It's just crazy. And so we need to, not only for ourselves, but really, how do we teach our kids to tap into this, this God, well of God love that they have within them? They just need to get past their five senses allow the Holy Spirit to come in, love through them. But how do you train someone on that? It's not like you can see the Holy Spirit and you're like, okay, Holy Spirit, I need a, I need a love influx right now. I'm pulling up to the tank, fill me up uh, to overflowing so that I can gush out on a, it does, you don't see that, right? It, it's, so it makes it really difficult to train or, or does it? I would actually say it's, it's actually fairly easy to train, but it's not fairly quick to train. I think too many times we, we jump off the train before it's arrived at the station just because it's taking way longer than we wanted it to. And I think that's true for a lot of things in life. Very few things, if you look through the Bible, are fast food style. There, it's just not in there. It talks about longevity. It talks about being patient. There's, I mean, if you look in the word, how many times does uh, God put something on a person's heart to pray for or prepare for that their son or their grandson is actually the one to walk it out? When we're talking about longevity. Now we're talking generationally. And so how do we, back to the question, how do we teach our kids to love the God kind of love? And really, it's recognizing all of the opportunities that God is already bringing into their life. I don't know about you. My kids don't always get along. There's times when they see things very differently, especially about what the other child should be doing. And instead of looking at this as a another problem, I have to 
help them work this one out and, and talk them through. I have to, this is another issue, another problem, I, another um, constant sore spot in my side, whatever it is. You know how you know how you can tend to react to those things. Instead of looking at that, look at it as, a, as an opportunity to teach them to love well. And you may have one child that responds to it better than the other. My youngest, or my youngest son, I should say it that way, youngest son, he's just naturally built this way. He's a peacemaker. He is always looking for ways to love another person uh, generously, which is really, really cool. The, uh, my oldest son struggles with this a little more, but it doesn't mean that we don't teach him. It doesn't also mean that we need to um, compare him with his brother. He's a different person. He's not meant to be his brother. And so I want to make sure I guard my words and don't say things like, why did you see how easy that was for your brother to just choose to love another, choose to to not fight for his own way or force what he wanted on other people? I mean, we, we have those thoughts, right? But it would not be training him to think godly about himself if I continue to point out how his brother is acting godly and he chooses not to. It won't help the situation. So instead, when, when they're, t- they're going at it, right? What do we do? We pause and ask them to find a way to love one another. And I want them to tell me what that would look like. How would you love God's way right now? You got all these emotions, you got all these thoughts charging through your head. And so so what would it look like to tap into uh, God's love right now? And just that simple pausing and causing them to evaluate the situation opens the door for them to tap into the spirit check in with him and begin to release him in that situation. I know that's not like super spectacular. It's not an earth shattering thing. And yes, you're going to have to do this more than once, but it's a great spiritual exercise that God has bringing into your family to use this as a training time, not a uh, torture time for yourself really is what it sometimes can feel like, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Another fun thing I would say, one, we started this with our boys and they absolutely love it. They have become addicted to shopping on Amazon. They think that is so fun because they can find thousands of options of everything out there, right? And so we started a wish list. You know how you can start a wish list? We've we've done it with, with Christmas list before. We'll start a, a wish list for Christmas that they can put some things in that they think are really cool, and we tell them to slim it down because usually it's like a hundred things in there, <laughs> and most of it they don't remember and wouldn't even want if they received it. But we started this last year uh, developing a wish list for giving, things that we would love to give to someone else. And it's super, super fun. Now they're actually excited because they've done the shopping. They've thought about it. We encourage them to check in with the Holy Spirit and not get what they would feel good about giving, but give something that they that they feel like the Spirit is teach, or showing them that the other person would love to receive. And that is a big difference. And if we can teach our kids to do that now... Oh my word, it's going to save them so much heartache, even in marriage relationships. How many remember that? You give a perfect gift that you would love to receive, or you do the perfect thing that you would love for someone to do for your for you, and then it's not matched with the same excitement or, or feeling of appreciation that you were hoping for, and instead that becomes a, a touchy point or... Uh, potential cause of dissension within the marriage relationship because we we gave what we wanted to give how we wanted to give it and didn't really factor in the other person it was actually a love gift to ourselves by taking this action and uh, that doesn't go very well guys take note your wife won't not appreciate that especially future future husbands out there 
don't do it. That is not worth it. So Amazon wish list for giving. Now we can take some of their their uh, allowance and we're, we're teaching them to uh, set aside some for giving to God at church. When they, when they go into church, they have some tithe money sometimes that they're giving. Uh, we let them save it up because it's, it's pretty minor a lot of times. Uh, so they can save it up and then they have a giving account. They have to put a little bit into giving and a little bit into savings. And in that giving account, they're saving up. And once they get to a, a whatever mark that they need in the Amazon account, then they're able to purchase that thing and create this gift for this person for no other reason than to just say, God loves you. And it's so fun. Our kids look forward to doing this for shopping for others. And then we ha they actually have not saved enough yet to be able to give a gift. But I can just imagine how exciting they, excited they will be because you know as, be, more, as much as I do. The joys of giving are so rich. So that's, uh, that's a great option. Last one I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to let you all go. Uh, the last thing you could do is getting close to spring cleaning time. I don't know if anybody else is getting the urge. Spring cleaning, spring planting. I want to get outside again and really enjoy the weather. I do not like being cooped up in a house. I'm an outside person, even though I'm sitting at the computer, what feels like all the time, working on some fun root stuff, which isn't bad. Anyway, so spring cleaning time's coming up. Encourage your kids to ask God how they could love someone else by sharing something that they own. Basically, you're giving a gift of a used toy to someone else that would need it or someone else would appreciate it. Uh, my sons have given Nerf guns before and because uh, we seem to collect them at a mad rate. So <laughs> they've given Nerf guns to someone that they knew didn't have any or didn't only had limited uh, numbers so that they, when they all get together, they can all play Nerf together. And and you know what? That's okay. It may be slightly selfish, but they're learning to look around at what the God has blessed them with and figure out how God can use it to be a blessing to someone else. And that lesson in itself is amazing. I want my kids to be great at checking in with God, seeing how he wants to use the things that he's blessed our family with to bless others. I just continue on that that giving and the generosity, pouring out our thankfulness to God for how he has blessed us. So anyway, that's some great ideas. You may want to set an alarm on your phone to do one of these or and talk to your kids about doing one of these this weekend. The weekend's coming up, and this would be a great time to initiate the thought. Now, don't try to punch it out all in one day. Here's the idea. We're going to do this. Boom, boom, boom. Give them time to work through it a little bit with God. I know some of some of your kids are probably like, yeah, spur of the moment, let's go, let's do this. Others will need to process it a little bit. And so because of that, take some time. Talk to them about, hey, we're going to choose to love people, and this is probably what it's going to look like. So I want you just to check in with the Holy Spirit and, and see what He wants you to do. That way you can all be intentional with it, not just... Um, sporadic with it. I don't know how else to say it. Because real love is a choice. It's pretty intentional. Let me let me read that one more time. God's definition of love, choosing to honor and serve regardless of your feelings or how they respond. Let's teach our kids to do that. And you know who the perfect person to do that is? It's you. God made you their parent because you can impart into their life like no one else can. That's why he gave them to you. And so you can do this. Take this weekend and teach your kids to love. Check in with the Holy Spirit. Maybe he'll give you another idea. And if he does, put it in the comments. I would love to see how God is stirring you up to teach your kids to love. All right. Well, that is it for me. I got to let you all go. Thanks for joining me today. Check out rootbibleacademy.com if you have not, and I will see you all later. Bye.